Hello, I'm Dave from Retired Time Productions, and I did a short video before this one about X-Plane Flight Simulator working with the ArduPilot Mega. I probably should do a more in-depth how-to or tutorial on how to get that started. So uh, let's get into that now. So this setup assumes that you already have your aircraft set up with the ArduPilot and you have a receiver connected to the ArduPilot. I'm using the Easy UHF receiver which is under here. Uh, but you can use any receiver you want just as long as it's been working and you have your radio bound to that receiver and you have set your parameters in your ArduPilot. In other words, you've gone through the calibration. So here's the mission planner up right now and it's on initial setup and you should have already gone through the calibration. If you haven't, you can look at some of my other videos. But uh, you need to calibrate these items here, especially the radio calibration and of course the uh, the compass and probably you're going to have to do the failsafe for the radio so if the radio cuts off the failsafe will come up so uh, those things are in my other videos or in other people's videos on the internet but make sure that's done first because that sets up all the parameters that you need for the mission planner okay here's the simulation tab in the mission planner that we're going to be using with X-Plane and uh, in order to use this simulation tab you have to download the HIL firmware so later on we're going to be uh, loading the HIL firmware down here which means hardware in loop for simulators and uh, when we load that HIL firmware it's going to wipe out the firmware that we already have and we're going to lose all our parameters so uh, it's very important that you back up your parameters and I'm going to show you how. First make sure your USB cable is connected to your ArduPilot. Then go ahead and connect. Okay now go to the configuration tab and come down to the full parameter list and under here go to the save button and save all your parameters that way we can load them back in after we're done simulating okay and I usually just put mine on the desktop it's a good idea to also back them up to a flash drive so that you can have them in case anything happens typed in my backup parameters for the param file here. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. And you can enter notes here. I don't usually do that. Okay, so now they're backed up. And I've got them down on my desktop down here. Okay, so later on we can load those back in. In fact, we'll probably load them back into the uh, HIL firmware version. So let's go to the ArduPilot.com wiki in the section for the X-Plane software and here's the basic directions for connecting and setting it up and down here is the overall setup you have your RC transmitter going to your receiver which is connected to your ArduPilot and then the USB cable connecting the ArduPilot to your computer which has the Mission Planner software and the X-Plane flight simulator and here's how to set it up and the first thing we need to do is download X-Plane so let's go to the site click the demo tab get rid of the advertisement okay click download for Windows if you got a Windows machine it will start downloading going into your download folder go to that folder show the folder find the zip file open the zip file and then run the exe file inside the zip file okay so Let's go ahead and continue, and then we're going to agree to the license agreement. And the destination will be the desktop. It'll start downloading and put a folder on the desktop. Right here. Okay, when it's done downloading, open that folder on the desktop. 
go inside, and there's two versions of X-Plane. There's the 32-bit. I'm going to take the 64-bit right here and create a, sh a shortcut on the desktop. All right, got that done. Now let's go ahead and uh, we'll run X-Plane and do these settings right here. So let's open X-Plane. Now when X-Plane comes up, you may see this window or you may see an animation. But just go ahead and click Go. And then the first thing you do is say OK to that. Then hit the P key on your keyboard to pause the program while we do some settings. Alright, let's select an aircraft under aircraft. There's only one RC aircraft and that's the PT-60. So we'll take that open the aircraft and then we got to hit the P key again on the keyboard to pause it alright next let's go to view and we're going to pick the chase view now you won't see the plane in chase view until you start flying I don't know why alright let's go to the data setup here it's under settings we want to tick all these check boxes according to the directions all right, let's get the first one. That's pretty straightforward. Now the next group has one extra one that's not in the direction. So we tick the first three. And then there's a new one called Mag Compass, and we're going to tick that too. And then tick the last one. Okay, now we need to change our UDP rates according to the instructions. And it should be a 5 right here. So let's go in and put a 5, so it's 500. Zero, zero. Okay, now just go ahead and close that window. Alright, next we're going to go ahead and do our IP address and our port address. Now they have advanced tab in the directions, but actually it's not the advanced tab under 10. Go to Net Connections and you'll see it's under the Data tab not the advanced tab. So click IP of data receiver, change that last number to a 5, 49005. Change this to your local computer address, 127.0.0.1. And that's all you need to do. Close that window. Okay. Now we gotta close the entire explain program so that the savings are so that the settings are saved. Okay, next up is the flight planner setting. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is connect the APM to the computer. According to the directions, the next thing to do is load the HIL simulations version for the APM software. So let's go to the mission planner. Go to uh, the config tab, no, the initial settings tab. Uh, install firmware. Now we're going to uh, load this HIL software here. Just make sure you're not connected. The USB cable is connected, but not the connect button. Or you'll get a message that tells you you're in error. Okay, let's go ahead and load it. You'll see the HIL loading. And this is the Mission Planner software, but it's just the HIL version. Okay, now the next thing is calibrating your equipment. But remember, we already saved our parameter file where we previously calibrated it. So all we got to do is load that in. Now that's under the config tab, but it's not there right now. That's because we need to reconnect. So we'll reconnect. And the MAV link connects. And then we can go back to the config tab and find the full parameter list and load in our parameter files, which are down here on the desktop. So we find uh, my backup parameters right here and open them. They'll load in. Now all our parameters are already configured and we don't have to do any calibration. Isn't that great? So any of the parameters that have changed, you'll see it down here is a little green uh, highlighted item. Okay, the final thing we need to do is go ahead and write the parameters. So we need to go right here and go ahead and write the parameters to the Arduino Pilot Mega. 
So now you'll see that the green items have been unhighlighted. It's been written so these parameters now match the Ardu pilot so there's no highlighted items anymore. Okay, we're in the uh, simulation tab of the APM HIL software and we want, just want to check uh, the X-Plane 10 checkbox and the X-Plane button, radio button's already on. Let's check display all. What we're going to do is check our stick input from our radio through our receiver to the Ardu pilot. So let's start the Simlink here. And even though the X-Plane simulator is not running, we can still check our stick inputs. Okay. So right here I'm just going to go ahead and move the ailerons and the elevator stick. And you can see down there at the bottom, right here on this graph, the results of those stick movements. Here's the throttle, the yellow line there being drawn as the throttle. So it looks like everything is working well. That means my radio is communicating with my receiver and the receiver is sending its PPM data to the Arju pilot. The Arju pilot is displaying it. Let's just check our HIL settings. Now here's the port settings here for the SIM to planner and the planner to SIM and they are default. We'll just leave them alone. Here's the advanced settings and this is for the local computer and we'll leave them as default because we're not doing this between computers on the it the internet or network. Alright, now let's look at the uh, directions again. And the uh, main thing is I think just remember that your throttle stick should be down. And then up here the A key doesn't really work. You have to use uh, the menus to get your rear view. And the P key does work as we found out to pause the program. Uh, the B key is for the brake. Okay, let's go here to the x -Plane simulator. I've already pressed P key for pause. Alright, let's pick our view. We're going to pick chase view because the A key doesn't work. Alright, now we need to go back over here in the uh, mission planner. Let's check X-Plane radio button here. Check the checkbox for X-Plane 10. And then let's start the simulation. Okay, let's check the flight data and you can see everything's active and working. Alright, back to X-Plane now. Uh, we're going to press the P key to unpause the program and press the B key to release the brake and now you can see the plane is moving. Let's go fly! Okay, so that's a wrap. That's all you have to do. After I got it up in the air I flipped my switch over here to fly by wire A mode and the plane is just flying along by itself and you can see the mission planner map and all the functions are working. Okay, one more thing is that the demo version of X-Plane does uh, stop stick input after 15 minutes so uh, if you decide that that 15 minutes is not enough you can always purchase it and it's not that expensive I've seen it for $59 and then I've seen it on Amazon right here for 29 for the North America versions. So I'm going to order the X-Plane software from Amazon for $29.99. Just see what it does and I'll let you know. So you might want to hold off ordering it until I test it and find out if it really works.